Hello, friends, and good morning. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another Sunday bonus stream. I don't... I keep calling these bonus streams, but I've been more consistent about painting on Sundays than on many weekdays, so... Eh, I call it a bonus stream so that if I ever feel like I need a day off, I can take Sunday off and not feel guilty about it because I'm not canceling a scheduled stream. I'm just canceling a bonus stream. So, yeah, bonus stream today. Uh, big news here, of course. I got my second shot yesterday and feeling relatively okay. Good morning, Insidious Pie, my good friend. Welcome, welcome. You know what, Pie? Do you mind if I mod you? I feel like you should be a mod. No, I can't do that from this window. I have to do that from another window. <laughs> you got so excited that it's this heart. <laughs> Instead of, oh, heart. I don't stream enough to do. There we go. Ah, heart. Yay. <laughs> um, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to have to go to a <laughs> different window to do this. Oh my goodness. This poor streaming laptop has too much stuff running simultaneously. Hey. Very frustratingly, Streamlabs has not been working on my stream. It works fine on the Battleground Games live stream, but none of my stream notifications show up in Streamlabs here. Not certain what's going on there, but meh, whatever. Uh, there we go. Okay, I can do this. So yeah, hi, I got my second shot. Yeah, there you got it. Heart hands. Use a mod, Pi, I think. Check and see if you have mod controls now. <gasps> That's right! Soon I can have Pi hugs! Oh my goodness. I cannot wait. Two weeks! Two measly weeks. It's not that far away. It's, it's gonna happen. We're gonna get there. Uh, but in the meantime, I took a week off this week for, uh, well, to celebrate getting my second shot in case I had any adverse reactions, which so far, knock on my wooden desk, so far I haven't had any really bad reactions. I've got very, very mild like sensitivity at the injection site. Yesterday, uh, I had a little bit of vertigo, like I felt slightly dizzy and a little, little out of it. Uh, today, I'm no more out of it than I normally am. Eh? I've lost track at this point of what brain fog is, excuse me, the result of like possible COVID exposure or just exhaustion from dealing with a global pandemic and what is, you know, the result of poor life choices, like staying up until two in the morning and then waking up at five. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing as well as I ever do. <clears throat> uh, it's been a year. But I'm here now, and I'm going to do some painting. Um, I should point out, we are still merely uh, three 
followers away from my April goal. With one week to go, I feel like we can make it. Uh, so that's nice. We'll get there, hopefully. Uh, and then I can start thinking about my May goal. Man, time goes by quickly. Um, but let's take a look at what we've been working on. Uh, I got myself some new coffee and I'm really enjoying my new coffee. I, uh, I follow J Justice, twitch.tv slash J Justice, I think. Might be that J Justice. Her, uh, her Twitter handle is that J Justice. Uh, she's a cosplayer and Mass Effect fan and stuff like that. And she's sponsored on her Twitch stream by uh, the Grinding Coffee Company. And I got myself some chocolate, Mexican chocolate coffee, which means it's coffee beans infused with chocolate, um, a little bit of spice, and cinnamon. And, you know, I'm, not, I'm a non-taster. I'm not, I've never had a very great sense of taste, but I am enjoying this coffee. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, right, Pi. Is it a is it a COVID reaction, or am I just a goblin with bad sleep schedule? Speaking of goblins, I am so pleased that you got to hang out with your birth family, and that they are just as gobliny as you are. It sounds like you all had a terrific time, and discovered a lot about each other, and that is very cool. Pi, it's been it's been a good week. So that's what I'm saying. It's been good. All right, let's take a look at this model. So this is the bell tower. And I did some sort of detailing on it the other day. Pretty happy with it. Not, you know, 100%, but it's fine. And it's ready for the table um, for the most part. Because uh, the uh, wash that I'm using is sort of like a shellac. It's very, you can see it's glossy and it was very sticky on the model. Um, because of that, I couldn't paint the stairs because I was holding the model by the stairs while I was painting it. So I'm going to just very quickly get a wash onto those. And I noticed the other day, I didn't do a wash on this, just this side of this here. It doesn't really need it, but I want it to look like everything else and not stand out. So we're going to do that. Um, also, I accidentally, you might be able to see it here, pulled some of the paint off the model with my fingers when it was still tacky. So I'm going to see if I can repair that quickly. Hopefully, I can do that. And then we'll just call this done. We'll say, that's as, as good as it's going to get. And it'll be ready for the table. Thank you, Pi. I think it looks fabulous too. Um, yeah, there's there's things I would have preferred looked different about it, but you know, this stream is all a learning experience. So uh, yeah, what we're using for the wash is this quick shade dark tone from Army Painter. Uh, may I read you a quote from? the bottle here. This is, I read this at the beginning of my last stream. Um, you'll recall I was very distressed with the fact that it was drying with this sort of glossy, shiny look to it. Not exactly what I was looking for, but th you know, I should have read this before I started. But then I read this uh, and it says, the army painter quick shade is spectacular shading and varnishing in one. Shading and varnishing. You will achieve stunning shading effects extremely fast with just one dip, while the varnish protects your miniatures from the wear and tear of the battlefield. So, yeah. It is a feature and not a bug. It is intended to have that sort of shellac varnished, shiny finish not what I wanted, but it's what I got. So, 
Okay. Okay. We deal with what we have, not what we wish we had. So we learned with this stuff that it needs to be really well shaken. Um, that was part of what probably caused the... So compare... Well, let me just throw my glasses on the floor. Uh, compare this piece in its shininess with this piece. And you can see that the stone head is still much shinier. And I think that's two factors that led to that. One is I was in a hurry. I, I varnished this entire thing, or you know, did the wash on this entire thing in one hour. So I was just blah, 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 just mashing it on there really quickly. Uh, the other factor is I don't think I had shaken the paint up quite as much. Um, so yeah, the paint was thicker or, you know, the varnish was thicker because the pigment was more at the bottom. I'm pretty happy with this as well. It's, you know, I just, I was very upset when I first realized how shiny it was going to be. And now I'm just resigned to it. I'm like, okay, that's just what that looks like. So that piece is done. That piece is completely done. This piece we're gonna finish right now. And then we'll work on some other little pieces and we'll talk about what we're gonna do with the rest of this week. Uh, so I'm using my dark shade wash and I'm using my uh, Wargamer Regiment. The other thing about this is that um, because it's got a different base than all the other paints that I use, it's not particularly water soluble. So I need to get some rubbing alcohol to clean the brush with. But that's, I'll deal with that off stream. Anyhow, I should open a window. I'm getting a powerful scent. Uh, paint in here. Slightly confined space. So you can see how this, this is what a wash is intended to do. It uh, gets into the cracks and crevices that are sculpted into the model. And sort of darkens the crevices to give the model more a more interesting finish. So this should be pretty quick. We'll just uh, quickly do this and then we'll move on to something else. I just want to finish this piece. I've been working on this piece for two weeks now, three weeks, a while. I just want it to be done. So, quickly get that wash into here. And then we can move forward. So I feel like it's been a good week. Pi got to hang out with her family, and that's awesome. At the store we had the pre-release this week and then the final release for a uh, new magic set, Strixhaven, which has been exceptionally popular and I'm quite pleased with the reception and with the set itself. Amanda and I have started opening cards and we uh, worked a little bit on our pre-release decks. We didn't actually play in a pre-release event, partially because Battleground isn't holding a pre-release, <clears throat> and partially because um, we just haven't had an opportunity to sit down and play with friends in a while. Um, but we opened our pre-release packs and thought about what we would build. Maybe we'll do some sort of a pre-release game on 
Battleground Games Live at some point. Now that I've gotten my second shot, and Amanda's gotten her second shot, someday soon we'll be able to hang out with friends and we'll get more actual gaming in. Um, like you said, Pi, we're looking forward to Pi hugs. That's right around the corner. I'm looking forward to bringing you more, more bread. Of course, now <clears throat> it's tough to get to you right now because the Sagamore is such a mess right now. For anybody who's unfamiliar with the Sagamore Bridge, it is a well-used bridge that is one of two ways to get from the mainland by car to Cape Cod. And they're doing construction on it or maintenance. Anyhow, it's down to two lanes, <clears throat> one going each way, and is going to be that way for, I don't know, weeks? I think they said Memorial Day is when they were going to finally open it up to regular traffic. And that's less than ideal. I, I'm guessing, Pi, that it is causing massive traffic jams right outside your house. That must be fun. Um, so yeah, I want to come visit. <laughs> and uh, because I've got this week off, I want to make bread. Uh, and I want to bring that bread to you. But I'm going to have to be careful about what time I choose to make that trip. Especially as we head into the nice spring weather. Like yesterday, I was hearing that the Sagamore Bridge and um, the roads leading down to the Bourne Bridge were gummed up for like miles. I was like, oh man, that's awkward. I guess it'll be good when it's done. Like, I don't... Bridge maintenance needs to be done. It's inglorious. Uh, it's not as flashy as, like, building new bridges or whatever. But if you don't do it, you get bridge collapses, and that's even worse. So, you know, it has to be done. Just... I wish they had chosen a not springtime time to do it. That's an awkward thing about being in New England, is that road work has to be done in the spring or autumn or summer. But you certainly don't want to be doing Cape Bridge maintenance in the summer when the tourists are all out on the road. That would be an even worse disaster, and we're getting there right now. Like, this weekend was obviously a perfect weekend for tourists. And that bridge was going to get jammed no matter what. But having that extra lane restriction... <laughs> so what I'm saying, chat, is I'm going to visit Pi. I just don't know how or when. But it will happen. It will happen, and it will be glorious. You can see I'm not being terribly precise with this. Um, I'm even putting it on a little heavier than I probably should. Just uh, quickly getting this wash on here. I guess it's good that it's going to add a protective layer because this is going to be used as a store demo piece of terrain. It will inevitably see some wear. So anything that gives it protection is good. Once it's dried, 
I'm going to add an extra protective layer. I have a matte finish varnish that I'm going to spray on. And that may slightly decrease the shininess of the piece. I don't, I'm not thinking it's going to do anything miraculous. Oh gracious, I just really dipped that brush deep in there. I'm killing this brush, guys. Um, I'm going to have to get a replacement for this brush. I'm going to try and preserve it. Like I'm going to, like I said, put in some rubbing alcohol and see if I can save it. But I'm not treating it well. This is not good for the brush at all. It's fine. It, it has served me well this past month. It has applied a lot of paint to models. But take care of your brushes, folks. Wash them regularly. Don't do what I'm doing. Do what I tell you to do. Right? Almost done. I've done the tops. I've done one side. I'll do the other side. And then I have to do the bottoms. And we're going to put this model aside to dry. And I'm going to open a window so that I don't asphyxiate on stream. That would be awkward. And then we're going to work on some other stuff. Try and preserve this brush. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can save it, but I can try. Okay. Bottoms. And then we're done. This I can be even messier with. I severely doubt that the bottom of this thing is going to get any attention. The only people who will ever know if I didn't do a very good job on the bottom of this model are me and you folks in chat. Oh great, my computer wants to update. No, computer, I'm streaming. No updates. Is it just me or is window 10, Windows 10 updates, are they getting worse? Yeah, I understand the bridge has to be done. But you're right, Pi, I wish they could do it at nights. They're just trying to do it all at once. probably freed up the money and they were like we're gonna do this bridge now and good luck to anybody who lives near it or needs to use it will cut down on the tackiness. The model, even after a couple days of sitting to dry, is still sticky. something actually interesting with the rest of today's bonus stream. I 
guess I, it's that tiny patch of paint that I accidentally ripped off that I need to attend to. So we'll do that. And then we'll just uh, we'll say this is done. As dumb as it's going to get anyway. Prints all over the model. Dang, dang it. All right. All right, chat, never do this. All right. So I am just going to leave that brush in the water. Like I said, it's not, this paint is not super water soluble. Uh, let's see, I need my deck tan there. And we're just going to. Do a quick touch up. Right here where the paint came away from the model. You know what would help? If I took the cap off the brush. Good morning, Amanda. Hello. Pie is keeping me company. Okay, you can see, so that's the, the color that this was before I did the wash. Very, very bright. So we're gonna let that dry. Then we'll just throw some wash on that and that will be a done piece. All right, chat, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, go get some rubbing alcohol to try and save that brush. I'm going to crack a window and I'm going to put this somewhere where it can dry. And we're going to say that this model is complete. I'm pretty happy with it. And then we're going to work on some other things. So put the top back on this. And I will be, oh, uh, I actually need a little like container to put it in. Um, I'll be right back folks. So, okay. Amanda is bringing me rubbing alcohol in the container to put it in. All right, uh, give me a sec, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Hello, everybody. Uh, bring that down a touch. All right. So Amanda got me some Dixie cups. I think they actually might be legit Dixie brand Dixie cups. I'm just gonna put a little rubbing alcohol in there, and then just 
put this brush in to soak. So in general, um, there you, go. you do not want to uh, leave your brush face down in a liquid because it's going to, um, A, it's going to curl the end of the brush, which you don't want. And B, um, the liquid gets into the brush head. It gets in there and loosens the, the brush. But I do need to do this just to uh, break up the paint that's, like I said, this stuff is, it gets on the brush. Ooh, that's alcohol. Oh yeah. It's wafting in my face. Let's hold it further from my nose. Um, the paint gets caught on the brush and you need to dissolve it a little. So I'm trying to, trying to preserve this brush if I can. Yeah. It seems to be okay. dry and see how it is. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, so I'm going to clean my workspace a little bit because this is getting kind of out of hand. I think I've mentioned before for palettes, I'm using uh, the backers from um, shipping labels from the store. They're just like wax paper. They're a very convenient palette. All right, that's a little cleaner. So let's think about what we're gonna work on today. Just what pieces do I want to get a little bit of work done on? I've got these platforms that I've been working on. Uh, so the idea, these are just platforms that go between structures when you're putting your terrain on the table. They're just a convenient way for you know troops to have somewhere to stand up high. And I've got two of those. I want to paint these little bits where they're tied together. That's, you know, how it's sculpted to look. Um, so I've got those. And I've got a couple other little pieces of terrain I've been working on. I've got a couple of these little walls. Figure I can finish painting the um, sort of marble bits of one of these work on another one. I've got two of those. And I've got this little fountain that I've been working on. It's not a big piece of terrain. It's just a little like interesting bit. More flavor for the table than actual terrain. Um, but I want to do something with that. We will work on that today. And that should be enough for today, probably. Uh, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do with the rest of this week, because I think I'm going to take a break from terrain. I have these four giant pieces of terrain still to do. Um, and there's just a lot of this, where I'm going to have to paint all these little pillars and stuff. Um, I've set myself up for a lot of work with these. So... They're going to be time-consuming and a little bit monotonous. 
So I'm going to put it off. I, I'm going to do them. I'm just going to put it off for a little bit. Because I feel like doing some minis. So we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do for minis. Oh, pie. You set up a mouse trap and it's gone? That's, uh... <laughs> wow. The mice stole it. That's very Rats of Nim. Alright, so we're going to do these little bands here. And what we're using for that is this. Uh, just Vallejo Red. Uh, and of course we're using my favorite brush is my, oh, nope, not that brush. Oh my god, look how destroyed this brush is. My medium glaze brush. We're gonna use my medium layer brush from Citadel. Actually, that's a, a new one. We're gonna use this one, small layer. the downside of laying mouse traps is that there's a strong possibility of catching mice. I remember when my parents' house on Beacon Hill was infested with mice. My dad laid out uh, sticky traps. And man, oh man, that was traumatic. Uh, get a little bit of color on these model pieces, why don't we? here is I don't think I can do these in one sitting because I'm going to want to paint one side and then let it dry before I paint the other side. I'm guessing Pi this is a spring trap that has caught a mouse and the mouse is dragging it around. Something like that. If it doesn't snap the mouse's back in one go. Which is what, you know, it's supposed to do. That's the most humane thing would be. If it just kills the mouse outright. What is your cat doing? Amanda's mother's cats have occasionally caught mice. And when they don't catch them, they become very attentive to particular areas. And Amanda's mother is like, oh, okay. There's a mouse under there, isn't there? Because this cat is camped out waiting for it to appear. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right. 
you are abroad. And you didn't bring your cat with you, obviously. I would say that cats are very effective mouse traps, but they also can sometimes bring you a gift. Like, I got a toy here. Do you want to play with it? It's a squeak toy. Oh, thank you very much for the follow. BH. MTG, I'm guessing that's BH Magic the Gathering 1, uh, one of the folks who was in uh, the Battleground Discord, so welcome, glad you could be here today. This is not a super thrilling painting stream today, because I'm doing uh, touch-ups on some terrain, so I'm glad you could join us though. Uh, I was just saying I'm hoping to take a break from painting terrain soon so that I can paint uh, some actual minis, which frankly I haven't painted any minis in uh, a month because I've been concentrating so much on doing this war cry terrain. This is the uh, store demo war cry terrain for the Abington location. So this is what's going to be available for people to play with in Abington if you're demoing war cry, which is a squad-based variant of uh, Age of Sigmar or Warhammer Fantasy, depending on how old school you want to be. I mean, how long have you had Bitchy Cat? The mice could have moved in when you took her home. Oh, speaking of cats, I hear a cat out in the apartment. finish um, painting these little bands on this piece of war cry terrain, this little platform, and I'll show some of the models that I want to work on the rest of this week. I was going to save it for the end of the stream, but as long as we've got folks in, in chat right now, I might as well talk about what my plans are for this week. I mentioned on the Battleground Discord, and I say this on my stream frequently, I am not a fast painter. Um, if you're looking to learn how to get stuff done quick, I'm not the person to watch. Um, and I'm not like, I'm not a professional level or expert painter, but I am a persistent painter. I do, especially now that I've got this stream, where I'm sitting down and doing a little painting pretty much every day, I do feel like I'm getting more painting done. And I'm kind of curious after doing all this terrain, because I've been doing terrain for a month now, I'm kind of curious to see um, if I'm any faster when I actually get to figures again, which I'm going to start working on tomorrow. But uh, BHMTG, 
my first two pieces of advice for you, if you came here for advice, which I don't know if you did, uh, but my first two pieces are um, learn, you know, obviously you're going to do a lot of painting and it's a process of discovery. Um, but one of the first things that I tried to figure out as I was learning to paint um, is just how to um, manipulate the paint to get it to do what I want it to do. When you're painting on this scale, um, at least if you're me, you kind of almost sculpt the paint more than you paint with it. So you want to get just enough on the very end of your brush that you have a little bit of paint you can apply to the model and then you can sort of manipulate it by pushing it around with the brush head. That's uh, what I always feel like I'm doing when I'm painting. Uh, my second piece of advice is rinse your brush frequently. Keep your brush clean because that is going to help preserve the brush. Um, you'll notice I'm rinsing it and then I've got my paper towel and I'm sort of pulling it across the paper towel. As I'm doing that I'm sort of twisting the brush and that's how I'm keeping the tip nice and fine. say I figure it was probably the right thing to do to release the mouse but nature will probably take its course if that mouse is not in a good way Regardless, hopefully, if it survives, that mouse will avoid your apartment or that house going forward. It'll be like, okay, right, this is not a safe place for mice. I know that mice do have some social structure, so perhaps it will communicate to other mice stay away from this place and that would be a benefit all right let me i'm finishing up this here let me pause in the painting of this piece i have to let it dry anyways before i can do the other side because if I just go straight into painting this side, I'm going to have to lay it on wet paint, and that's not good. So let me pause in this, and let me show you the minis that I want to work on this week. And give you an idea of what this week is going to entail for the stream. Um, so, the Warcry demo comes with a huge number of figures. Ugh, if I can get them. There we go. Um, there's eight iron golems, which I've already done a lot of work on. So these guys are virtually done. They need a wash. They need some highlights. Uh, you can see they look a little bit monochromatic. Obviously, I've got a lot of detail painted into them already, but they need a little bit of work. So they're virtually done. Then there's the Beast Men. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Beast Men figures. 
uh, those are almost entirely uncompleted. Uh, I started applying a little bit of flesh tone to some of them, but they need a lot of work. Um, but neither of those are what I'm going to work on this week. Um, this is everything that's in the box. You can see I've been working on this terrain here. And we're making great progress on all that stuff. Um, and then here's our untamed beasts and our iron golems. And then we've got these chaotic beasts, right? And there are um, six of these sort of bird lizards. They look like flying skexies. There's six of those. And there's six of these angry imps. Ah. So this week, I'm going to work on the angry bird lizards, on the, the bird lizard folks. These are delicate models, which is why I've got them in foam, but it's, I'm trying to them as best I can. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to work on these six. I've got them all primed. I primed them in gray. I'm going to paint my finger. There we go. Lovely. happen. Alright, so there's those six figures. Um, Serena assembled two of these and I assembled the other four. Uh, and they, they're kind of fun to build because when you're building them, uh, the sort of neck frills here and the heads are two separate pieces and you can mix and match it doesn't the instructions don't specify you know this bird looks this way and this one looks this way it's just sort of put six frills and six heads on six models so I I went for variety um, and I tried to mix it up as I was constructing them um, And there's such a cool sculpt. I don't know if you can see, but they've got four eyes. Like, I think maybe that's a nostril and an eye. I don't know. They kind of look like they have four eyes. Yeah, right. There's nostrils up here on the end of the beak. And then they've got four eyes. These things are just, they're gross and they're cool. And I'm really, really looking forward to painting them. So that's what I'm going to work on on stream this week, is painting these guys. Now, you probably saw the assembly instructions on the back side have recommended paint colors. These are all Citadel paint colors, obviously. And this is what they recommend that you build these guys to look like. I'm gonna try, I'm trying to make the iron golems and the untamed beasts look kind of like their corresponding figures here. Um, but for these guys, I'm gonna diverge and I'm gonna diverge wildly. I just, I feel like it's such a cool sculpt I want to do something interesting with it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to play with some of my new metallic alchemy paints, my metal and alchemy paints that I got online. This is something that one of our regulars in stream recommended. Hello, lobster. Welcome. Oh, you're gardening now. I'll join the garden. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this metal, metal and alchemy uh, kunzite alchemy, this sort of purpley metallic, and this emerald alchemy, which is a blue green. I'm gonna use those in painting the wings and the frills to make these really interesting. One, I mean, when I was assembling these, I was like, these wings, these feathers are going to be so much fun to paint. I cannot wait. So yeah, this week I'm going to take a break from terrain and I'm going to work on these little dudes. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. I should also... Uh, work on their bases. Their bases are very plain right now, right? They're just just ovals. So I should add some stuff to those. We'll work on that later. Later on. But that's my objective for this week is to work on these. And I'm really looking forward to that. So this week should be a lot of fun. We'll end the month of April doing something interesting and bizarre. Okay. But in the meantime, I really painted my finger. It looks gruesome, doesn't it? That's just paint, guys. I just, I laid my finger down on the palette by mistake. But boy, looks gruesome. So for the remainder of today's stream, I want to finish work on these little wooden platforms. work on a couple of those stone walls. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Sounds like Pi is having a good weekend. Certainly, now that I've got my second shot, I really was bracing myself. I was like, oh, I'm ready to be to like take a day off and just sleep through the day but I don't feel significantly worse than I do on any average Sunday maybe a little bit lightheaded that could be the turpentine I'm definitely over analyzing everything I'm like oh man I feel dizzy. Is that is that a result of the the shot? I don't know. But I was fully prepared to be like an achy, exhausted, unmoving mess today. And I'm glad I was able to just sort of come hang out, do some painting. I'm gonna play some Mass Effect today, play some Pokemon. I was watching 
uh, a stream last night from one of the Battleground regulars, and he was playing um, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu on stream, and I was like, man, I never did finish my Pokedex for that game. I should go back and play it a little. So I turned that on this morning, and I want to play some Pokemon. I am realizing the reason I never finished my Pokedex is that there are some things I have to get from the other version of the game. As with many Pokemon games, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu has a corresponding Pokemon game, which is Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. And there are some things you can only get in one or the other. And there are some things that only evolve when you trade them. Like, if I want a Machamp, I have to trade a Machoke. So, I may ask Amanda if I can boot up Let's Go Eevee on her cart and trade between our two carts, between our two switches, so that I can get a couple of things. Um, there's the the fossil Pokemon, I have the Kabuto, and the other one is that sort of pterodactyl thing. And the only way to get it is by trading it with somebody who chose the other fossil, or starting a new game. And I never caught Mewtwo. I was kind of shocked with myself about that. I was looking through my Pokedex and I was like, I never caught Mewtwo? What's wrong with me? Yes, exactly. Lobster of Revenge. I'm, I'm so pleased you're listening to Thrilling Adventure Hour. It does have a... It's less... Um, I would say it's... It's not exactly like Farsign Theater. Farsign Theater is more... Uh, what do I want to say? More bizarre. Um, but it's definitely a... Homage and throwback to old radio programs. Uh, sometimes quite directly, like during the introduction to Beyond Belief, which is one of the segments they go, they do. Um, one of the lines is, "Who cares what evil lurks in the uh, the hearts of men?" Which is obviously a reference to the shadow. Um, but yes, it is an homage and a takeoff of classic radio programs and it is so much fun i love the thrilling adventure hour particularly sparks nevada marshall on mars and beyond belief last night's live program was fantastic they did a radio show via zoom call and went very well, I think. And Paget Brewster as Sadie Doyle is one of the funniest things I have ever listened to. With her ridiculous accent. It's sort of a weird Catherine hepburn -y finishing school accent and it's hilarious so I thought you would enjoy those lobster I'm so pleased you're, you're having fun with that Lobster, have you made it to the musical episode of Sparks Nevada? 
there's a musical episode where an alien causes everybody to sing and it is ah, sheer genius. You will get some of the songs from that episode caught in your head for decades, I can tell you. The Don't Want No Trouble In My Place song. Wow. And now I want to go back and listen to that right now. Maybe when I'm done painting today. Listen to some sparks in the bottom. Marshall on Mars! I'm from Earth. So guys, we only need two more followers to hit my April goal. That's pretty impressive. I wasn't sure when I set this goal if it was a realistic goal, if it was too ambitious, or if it was too conservative. It seems to be right on the money. So, that's nice. Alright, done with that for now. Let's check on brush that I was just using to do that wash. I'm sure you missed this. Um, the wash that I'm using is non-water soluble. Yeah, you can see these bristles are really stiff and clumped. It's not great. You may need a little more I'm in the alcohol. I'm just going to leave it there. Again, don't do this to your brushes, folks. That's not, not proper brush maintenance. But I need to do something with this brush. I want to save it if I can. It's a good brush. Alright. Well, that does that. Let's finish the other side of this piece here. Again, deck tan is this color here. Oh, I cannot do this with this brush right in front of me. Hang on, I'm going to mute myself for a sec. alcohol was giving off some fumes and having my nose right in the cup was not going to be good.
doing with this. I need to practice getting some speed on this. Those remaining large pieces of terrain that I have have a lot of areas that are going to be like this where I need to do these particular shapes. So I need to, need to work on the speed at which I do this. I'm really not doing much detail on these two pieces. The, uh, the two little stone walls that I've got. I'm just doing. I'm basically leaving these little bricks the color of the gray primer that I used. And then I'm doing the pillars and stuff in this deck tan. And then I'll do a wash, obviously. But I'm keeping these pretty simple. They're not, you know, huge set pieces. They're just a little something to uh, add some cover to the table. stuff. Although, I should say, I'm probably going to come back and do something with these lightning bolts and stuff that are sculpted into them. off a couple days ago um, the <coughs> here on these large pieces of terrain you can see that sculpted in here are these figures and I'm probably gonna do something with those I'm gonna like add some color to the lightning bolts down here got a little halo around the head. I'll do something with that. We've got a lightning bolt coming out of their hammer. So yeah, I'm going to add like some details to those. And that's what this is the bottom of here. So if I add details to those, I should add details to the, the bottom bits as well. are uh, if you're interested in the lore of Age of Sigmar it seems pretty obvious to me that those are meant to be um, God I just had it uh, Stormcast Stormcast figures um, sculpted into the, the terrain 
implies that this was a Stormcast Citadel of some form in the past. It has fallen into disuse and is now being used as a battlefield between the uh, Untamed Beast and the Iron Golems. Games Workshop does put a lot of thought into the flavor what folks call you know the the fluff very much as with magic where they have the different types of consumers that they try to appeal to games workshop has the same thing where they know there are some folks who are more into the lore and some folks who are more into the mechanics of the battle some folks who are more into as I am the painting and sculpting like I hardly ever play Warhammer or Age of Sigmar or Warcry any of the various games, but I love painting the minis. That's why I've been doing all this work on store demo stuff. Obviously, it's good to have a store demo we can show off. <clears throat> but I'm also doing it for myself. I'm doing it because I enjoy having these pieces. Or, you know, I enjoy doing what I'm doing right now, which is putting paint on models. I enjoy building them. That's just how I how I enjoy playing the game. No, you have to build it. Um, some of it you just need to snip, snip it from the sprue. Um, so this piece here yeah, let me put this down. This piece here is just a single piece. So you just snip it off the sprue and sort of clean up the sprue lines and it's ready to go. Um, these walls that I'm painting right now are two pieces. Uh, you can see the join here where there's like a corner here and then the rest on this side. So there are two pieces. Um, some of the larger pieces of terrain, like this, are many, many pieces glued together. This was actually a lot of fun. Uh, in the instruction manual for the construction, and I can actually show this off because I have it right here. Um, it says, here are the pieces, now build. And it just says, it doesn't tell you how to do it, just says, you know, assemble it however you feel like doing it. Glue pieces to pieces. And then they give you some examples, obviously. But there's no saying you have to do it in a particular way. So that was kind of fun. So there's four of these large pieces of terrain that are just sort of assembled from various bits. But yes, as with the models, you do have to construct the pieces yourself. Although some of these pieces I didn't build. Some of these pieces were built by Serena, who was one of the employees of the Abington location or was prior to the pandemic. Our hours are still significantly reduced in Abington due to the pandemic and our inability to host events the way that we used to. Um, so we had some staff reductions, unfortunately. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring Serena back in 
as soon as we're able to have events, she uh, she was part of the Wednesday D and D in Abington, as well as um, a lot of the Warhammer stuff. But, uh, like I said, she built this demo because when we got the demo in, she was like, "Oh, I want to learn how to play this," and she built um, some of the terrain and all of the untamed beasts and all of the iron golems in an afternoon. She just hammered it out. It's more than I could do in an afternoon. Um, so that she could quickly play some games, which is exactly what she did. done with this little piece. At least until I decide what I'm doing with the Stormcast uh, reliefs that are sculpted in. Uh, that other tiny wall mountain piece because that's a piece that has some fun sort of details to it might be entertaining to play with like obviously this terrain you do not need to do this amount of detail like you don't have to <coughs> do the pillars a different color from the stones or anything like that. You could just quickly hit this with a um, primer and then do a quick wash and maybe some quick highlights to differentiate the pieces. Um, I'm being a bit extra here, putting this level of detail into the piece. Especially for something like a small terrain piece like this. That, you know, you put it on the table just to sort of break the line of sight. But it doesn't, doesn't need to look spectacular. But that's who I am as a painter. I like to. as much detail into the model as I'm capable of doing. Very much this stream has been about finding, especially with all the terrain that I'm doing, finding a balance between the amount of detail I want to put into the piece and the amount of time I'm willing to spend on any one piece of terrain. And what I've discovered is with the amount of detail I want to put into these pieces, I am spending way more time than I probably should on simple terrain pieces. Eh, whatever. I'm having fun, and hopefully you folks in chat are having fun. It's the scene paint applied to models.
So some Warhammer and Warcry terrain have extra rules. These pieces, I don't believe that they do. They're just terrain. Um, but in Warhammer, for example, there are plasma conduits and stuff like that that have rules that say if they're hit with a certain amount of damage, they can explode. So maybe those pieces somebody could would spend more time on because they actually have more impact on the game. Still say these little... I think these are supposed to be Stormcast Eternal Lightning Bolt insignias of some sort. I still say they look like teeth. There. All right. Well, that's that little wall segment done. Excellent. Put that aside to dry. And then let's take a quick look at these wooden platforms and see how dry this is. It's dry enough that I can lay it down on it without it getting stuck to anything. So let's do the other side of these. And then those pieces will be done. I feel good about this stream. Hey chat, today we're going to finish like a bunch of pieces. Uh, so these bricked in areas, Lobster, um, I'm just going to leave them gray. And when the wash goes in, it'll get in between the bricks to make sort of highlight them. I might give them a slightly different overtone when I go back to do uh, do highlights. But I'm not going to paint the bricks themselves. I do love making color choices and sort of, I, I don't slavishly try to replicate exactly what the instructions tell you to do. For example, if you look at the instruction booklet, You'll note that all these little tied areas here, they've done in a sort of a brownish or an off-white sort of yellowish brown. Whereas I've gone with this red. I just wanted to give them a little more color, give it a little more personality. Part of why I'm really looking forward to working on those bird lizard folk. I should find out what they're called instead of just referring to them as bird lizards. They're bird lizards, y'all. Um, but part of why I'm really looking forward to playing with them is playing with some interesting color choices for them. Definitely not doing them at all to spec. This paint is clumping up a little bit. Need fresh paint.
coffee normally gets bitter as it gets cold. But this uh, chocolate and cinnamon Mexican flavored coffee. I don't know, it gets, uh, gets sweeter as it gets cold. It's kind of cool. working on these smaller pieces because it's so much faster like I'm not painting any faster there's just less area to cover so I get that, that little endorphin rush of completing a piece a lot quicker with these than with for example the bell tower piece which took me more than two weeks do all the stuff I wanted to do with it. I'll tell you folks, most people would not spend two weeks doing a single piece of terrain. <laughs> That's suboptimal. <laughs> really want to do a little bit more than that in two weeks. That's what I mean when I say that I am persistent but not fast. I mean, I did other stuff in between. But primarily I've been working on that one bell tower piece of terrain for two weeks now. after two weeks of work it will be. I don't know. It's not exactly how I envisioned it, but I'm pretty happy with it. Happy enough that I can call it done. That I can say, okay, stop working on this piece. And do a final varnish on it. And move on to something else. What kind of terrain would this be classified as? Um, not sure exactly how to answer that. So I don't play, like I said, I don't play the game a lot. Uh, this is Warcry terrain, which means it's terrain that could be used in any fantasy setting. But it's just sort of basic terrain. It's, uh, it's not got any special rules to it. it provides cover and provides um, areas for models to climb up onto. I mean, it's obviously intended for fantasy Warhammer, uh, which is to say Age of Sigmar. Um, but nothing to preclude it from appearing on a regular 40k table. Or a kill team table. But all of this stuff that I'm working on is part of the Warcry demo for the Abington location of Battleground Games and Hobbies. So it's all fantasy Age of Sigmar stuff. Because Warcry is a variant of Age of Sigmar. Sort of like Kill Team is a variant of 40k. Quad based small point age of Sigmar. So playing with 
nine models instead of 20. De rigueur. So make a starting point for Warcry. Once I'm finished painting all of this, I'm going to have to get Serena or Kevin to run me through some demos. Teach me how to play so that I can run demos in the store. We're going to try and come up with a quick, like, half-hour demo that lets people sort of experience all the phases of a, a phase of combat, a turn of combat so that they can familiarize themselves with how to play. And then we're going to have all of this stuff that I'm painting now available for people to play around with in the store. For anybody who's interested, Warcry is part of our Sigmar Sundays in Abington. Warcry and Underworld and just regular Age of Sigmar all going on on Sunday afternoons, starting about noon on Sundays. So, do a short stream on uh, Battleground Games Live of whatever demo it is that Kevin and I and Serena and everybody come up with. Forty-seven. About time to wrap things up. So let me finish this. And we'll sort of review what we got done today. And we'll talk about what we're going to be doing this week here on Twitch.tv/Tanatos. I'm going to just go ahead and blame the COVID vaccine for that. I don't really think it is a result of the COVID vaccine, but that's where I'm going to lay the blame. There. All right. So. Made some progress today. Um, I can't show off the bell tower because it's all the way across the room there, sitting in the window, drying. Um, but we did get some small pieces done today. Like, pretty much done, really. Which is pretty cool. Um, we've done these two little platforms. I'm going to do a wash on them, and then maybe some highlighting, but really they don't need much more than this. So those are ready to go out on a table and have troops march across them. Uh, we did the other side of this, like I had done one side earlier, but we did all that today. That's cool. We did the wash on the stairs for the... Uh, the bell tower 
I feel like it's been a productive stream. I'm pretty happy with that. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to work on these. Let's find out what they're called, right? I could just keep calling them bird lizards, but they actually do have a name. Let's see here. Here we are. They are Raptorix. So I will be doing these six Raptorix models starting tomorrow. I'm just going to take a break from terrain because I've been doing a lot of terrain this month. We'll see if after all of this time spent working on uh, terrain, I can actually get any more speed in the painting of actual minis. So there's a lot of cool details on these. I don't know how much of this you can see, but just looking at the model, they've got these kind of, I don't know, almost claws like coming out of their, uh, their thighs. This one has uh, metal rings in it. It's got um, cloth wrapped around its ankle there. I mentioned the fact that they have four eyes, which is kind of cool. I'm looking forward to doing that. And of course, these wings are going to be so much fun to paint. That's the thing I'm most looking forward to with these, is working on these wings, um, these feathers. I'm going to use my new metallic paints to really make them really impressive and dramatic. So yeah, I've got six of these to work on. And I have some color choices I have to make. We'll work on that starting tomorrow so yeah very productive day today I am man I can't believe I've gotten my second COVID shot now so I'm getting close to being able to hang out with folks <sighs> so close um we made some great progress on models today. I'm not feeling particularly out of it as a result of the COVID shots, so that's a plus. Um, gonna relax today, play some Mass Effect, play some Pokemon, and tomorrow, here on twitch.tv slash Tanatos, we'll start work on these Raptorix models. So, yeah. Good stream, folks. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this entire painting project, it, it rotates around having you folks there in chat to hang out with. Like, I, I would not have made the progress that I've made. I know this about myself. If it was just me sitting here painting, I'm easily distracted. I would have found something else to do with my time. Uh, Lord knows I play a lot of video games, and I might have just stopped painting to play something else. But because I have you folks in chat to hang out with, to chat with, to, you know, be here with me while I work on these, it makes all of this so much easier and so much more fun. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, thank you, BHMTG1. I don't know what to call you. Call you Magic the Gathering 1. Um, but thank you so much for joining me and for the follow and man, we're only two follows away from my April goal. I can't believe that either. What a good stream this has been. Ah, thank you everybody for joining me. Be excellent to each other and enjoy whatever art it is you choose to do. Bye everybody. Have a great weekend.